Touch. And the shooter has been identified as 73 year old Fraser Glenn Cross is his name. And I want to bring in David Packman. He interviewed him in 2010 on his radio show and joins me now. That's why we want to. Um, let me just ask you the question why did you decide to interview this, this man? I mean, he has been, he has been known as having a, a hateful and, and, and violent past. Well, at the time he was running for Senate in Missouri, he had an incredibly racist, anti Jewish ad that was running in Missouri. It seemed like this is someone who must have a, an incredible story that explains how they came to have these beliefs. How does someone get to this point? Extremism is something that we've talked about on my program quite a bit. And whether it's religious extremism, homophobia, racism, etc., uh, I'm interested in what, what's the source of that. And, and he had all of those things. And, and obviously his hate um, was directed at, at Jews. You're Jewish, and this came up, and I want to just play the exchange between you and he. How can I get in on this power? I'm Jewish. I feel completely powerless. Who can I talk to? Where can I go? Where are the meetings? I would love to get in on that power myself. Well, you're born, you're born with the, uh, the, all the big Jews discriminate in favor of other Jews. That's why there's so many Jews in the mass media, for example. But why am I powerless? Why, there, why there's so many Jews uh, in the federal government? But I'm powerless. Where can I, you're where are they meeting? You're not powerless. You're not powerless. You got your own damn radio show. You own 70 radio stations. You call that powerless? Believe me, I have no power. Yeah, right. That's what, that's what Howard Stern said. And he's a, a Jew liar just like you are. Were you ever concerned for your own safety? This is someone who, by the way, has been implicated in the murder of another liberal Jewish, liberal Jewish radio, radio host, host in 1984. He only served three years for that. Yeah, you know, uh, with all of these extremists, I think they're all on the edge of rhetoric becoming real-world violence. So a lot of, of people today have asked me, was there any sign that he specifically was ready to go further? We had the evidence from 1984 that he had gone further, but at the time there was nothing that made right. him stand out from the other extremists. And, in, and you interview a lot of people because you focus on this issue of extremism. Where did he rank? Did, was he someone that was off the charts or no? He was certainly near the top when it comes to uh, how angry he was. Many times I'll interview homophobes, extreme religious zealots, etc. And while their rhetoric is incredibly hateful, towards me they're very nice. And typically they want to help people. Many, many times they hmm. want to save people. He told me in no uncertain terms that even though I had never met him, even though I had never said anything specific to him or, or wronged him, merely because I was Jewish, he didn't like me. And that was actually an outlier. And, and here's, you, you asked him specifically, you know, do you hate me because I'm, I'm Jewish? Here's what he said. I hate all Jews. Okay. And I'll tell you why. For, for me to say out of the one corner of my mouth that I didn't hate all Jews, and then out of the other corner of my mouth say that Jews caused the deliberate murders of over 300 million of my, of my people during the 20th <laughs> century alone. Right. Okay. Of course I hate you. But what have what, what, my hate? What have I done personally? I hate all Jews. It's incredible when you hear that and you look at this person who only served, as you say, three years in jail for abetting the murder of, of, of somebody, that this person was actually out and able to do what, what he just did. It is incredible, and I think it's really easy when you sit behind a microphone, when you're behind a camera, you get a little bit insulated or desensitized, both to graphic and violent images, but also to extremism. And, and I think this happens to anybody who interviews people that are, that are so far on the political spectrum to, to uh, one side. And this is incredibly unfortunate, and it instantly brings you back, and it reminds you that just because you're behind the microphone doesn't mean these people aren't real. Yeah, well, that, um, it, it's incredible that those things are being said and this person was still uh, out living a normal life. And as you say, you interview a lot of people who are like that. So maybe this is a wake-up call. Thank you very much, David. We appreciate it. Thank you. And out front next.